Well, I'm back at the dump and I got this whole wall to cut down and let's get to it. Well, first jar out of the hole has a chip on it, but it's one of these 1930s cherry jars, I call them. So that's that one and we'll keep on going. We got some bottles showing up here, so let's dig dig some of them out. Uh, this is a broken one. I don't know what this is. Looks like a, one of those broken jars. I'm curious to know what this is right here. Uh, just a square. Just a. A natural square, I call them. They just. Is there anything else in here? Scrape all this down for now. So I have a flat wall. That's what I'm gonna do. That's what you do. You just sort of dig a wall. There's a bottle right there, and uh, it just looks like a a cracked up plain soda and uh, yeah, that's what you got to do is dig this wall and then go straight down until you hit the bottom or obstruction we'll keep going then well, I know what this is I think so I'll dig it out with you Yeah, it's a, a big milk of magnesia. So, we got another milk of magnesia. I get so many of these, but I give them away or maybe I'll sell them, I don't know. But milk of magnesia, here we go. Well, as you can see, I'm down to the water. I've used my fork to get down under it. There's not much there. So now I'm going to cut away the walls and fill this in and see what we find. Let's go to it. It's looking pretty sparse down here. I've got a, an olive oil bottle. So far that's it. I came up with that big thing there. Another one of those jars. I'm going to Scrape real quick here to see if there's anything else we can find. This area is pretty sparse. I got past the mud layer because, to be honest with you, beyond the mud layer, there's just a lot of heavy debris that just ends, ends up there, you know? So, it isn't like there's going to be there's a bottle right there I don't know what this is let's see what this is Here am I I'm seeing a jar baby food jar um, I found a lot of little bottles but see we're working in a, a deficit oh, that is a brick well nothing yet let's keep going well I just had a big cave in and uh, this is what I can't that's what came out of that another blue now I got two of those like I really need them. So I have to dig all this out. Let's get to it. Had a little cave in and this uh, funny looking jar and a vitalis bottle and neither of them are what I would call great finds. Um, that's why I'm here to see what's came out of this, uh, these spoils nothing really but we're getting into an area I believe has 
stuff in it. I mean, there's, you can see there's debris, but the bottles are not. They're going to have a hard time surviving in this because of, you know, the, uh, the metal factor and the brick factor. So, see what I mean? Jars aren't making it. Let me dig all this over here and see what comes up. I'll show you when it comes out. Well, a broken coke came out, and uh, let's look what it is. Well, it's a 1923, and it's a... What is this? Salisbury, North Carolina. Oh, well. That would have been a nice one. Let's keep going. Well, we got three bottles in the hole, one, two, and three, but, and I'm not expecting much here, but, uh, seeing that nothing's going on, let's just, just, just dig it, do a digging video here, uh, like, nothing, as you can see, that flask was nothing, um, this is going to be a, jar with the diamonds on the side. I don't mind those. They're pretty okay. I don't have any... I've got so many of those jars now, I don't really need them for much. And I don't have any takers for most of those things. Uh, so you get down to the burn layer and you can see where the situation changes from whole bottles to no bottles. But that is a use layer right down there of some sort. Here's another jar. You've seen that come out. And there are jars in here by the by the dozen, but I just don't like them. I mean, they don't say anything. They just, see what I mean? They just don't say nothing. And then, they don't talk to me, I don't talk to them. Uh, no sodas as of yet. I found the milk in here last time. Whoa! Yeah, folks. That's what caused that. Nice, uh, nice little, uh, there's a stubby beer. Let's see what that date is. And this came out too with it, but that's melted. It looks like a. Uh, I'm sweating on it. Looks like a. 46? Yeah, that makes sense. This guy here. Mr. Trouble. See, that's the problem. Weight takes this stuff down. Not so much. I'm escaping through here just quick. See if there's anything in. See, this was the main culprit, culprit right there. This piece of, I don't know what the hell it is. <laughs> Crap. But, you know. I'm having, it's your city today, so you're going to have to excuse me for the, all the, nothingness that's coming out of this dump today but uh i'll dig this one more section i might go somewhere else okay here we go funny the best thing to come out of here so far is this little teacup baby doll teacup that's it so here we have that well so far this brown bottle came out i don't know what kind it is this little Vix with a, I don't know what it puts on it. And a whole bunch of stuff, but nothing serious. I got some stuff in here. So, let's see. First I've got this. 
what is this? Just a, just a nothing as far as I can see. And then we're a little dig over here. I'm sorry. Get there's a bottle right there, and that is same old prescription bottle. Same old. They loved whatever was in that in those jars. I tell you, I might find 200 of those things in here and, uh, and nothing tells me what was in them so I'm, I'm assuming it was just plain household condiments um here's a bottle I, well there was a bottle there and there's huh huh what was this uh oh, it looked like it was a Warner safe. I don't know what the hell that would be doing up here. In the 40s. Definitely this is the 40s section of the dump. You can see I'm just digging away here. But uh, I'm coming up with zero crapola. So. Yep. Perfume bottle common in this dump. People like that kind of stuff around here. Um, another type of perfume bottle. And these little food. You can see there's a prescription there. Falling down. On that, another one. And uh, yeah, unless something real serious shows up real right away, I'm getting out of here because they're it's showing me. Oh, well, I like this. The uh, weave pattern jar. Well, I'll take that. I like that. The weave pattern jar. I only find a few of those. Part of a Japanese, or I don't know, maybe it's just a coffee cup. There's another flask kind of bottle. It has a cork on it, but it's a cork bottle, but I don't think it's. Oh, it has the horseshoes on the top. I don't know. I'll find out what this is. I sort of like it. It has a cork on the top, so it might have some more interest. I just got to research it. And anyway, as you can see, I'm struggling to make a video here because I picked a pretty barren area. And... Uh, there's bottles in here, but they're not worth filming, really. So, let me knock this all down. We're going to go somewhere else. Bye. Well, this just came out. And, uh... What is it? It looks like a hide, honey, and uh, it's a little small sample. It's actually... Looks like it's honey and almond cream. It's a looks like it's a machine-made little bottle, but that's a cool little bottle. At least I I'm not skunked on the small stuff. So let's get back to it. Well, I'm on my way out. Uh, I came up with just these small little bottles. None of them interest me at all. This one's broken too, anyway. But, I don't know what that was. Probably a hair tonic or something. Anyway, I'm heading out. Probably see at a roundup if I make one. And I'm going to be off to other things. Uh, this um, sort of has petered out for me again. And uh, they don't have much good to say about it. So, anyway, talk to you later. Bye. 
Okay, uh, as I always start, um, my little uh, insight on what I dug yesterday at the uh, not-so-hot dump, I'll call it. Um, it's a place that is so hit or miss that uh, it'll bring you, you get an idea that you're going to find something, and sometimes you do. Other days, though, you are pretty much out of luck. Uh, it's very sparse. It's pretty industrial. So now I'm really um, coming to the the mindset that there isn't a heck of a lot there. And as I mentioned before, the community didn't have that much money. It was a small town. Um, anyway, let's start out with the stuff that I did come up with and uh, try to see some value in it i guess um uh, one interesting thing that i found um that really i became excited with is this item right here now i metal detect and if i found this uh metal detecting in this condition i'd be pretty happy um and in the dump it was uh surprising that it came <laughs> it stayed in this condition it's a uh brass copper um, cap and it is from a Stanley thermos now if you're familiar with Stanley they're still around I believe um, and if they're not well let's see um, I'm not sure if they're still around or not um, but I think they are I really do because um, this has a real interesting backstory to it. This is a thermos cup and lid. It would twist onto the a, a, a metal bottle uh, that was uh, perfected uh, by a man who was uh, the father of vacuum um, uh, technology, uh, I believe. His name was William Stanley Jr. He was born in all the way into 1858. And uh, the funny thing about him was he became directly uh, a link with the electrical uh, industry. And how that happened was he was an engineer. He grew up, went to school, became an engineer. And uh, by uh, the 18... Um, by the 1880s, he was already a, a, a grown man working as an engineer, and um, he got a job uh, working for um, the the first electrical power, one of the first electrical power plants um, in the country, and he uh, design he was uh, hired to design uh, insulate uh, for electric. And he did that. Uh, he became very um, uh, needed. Um, he started his own company once he de developed the um, transformer for AC uh, for um, the Westinghouse company. And so, or was it, uh, yeah, I think it was Westinghouse. I'm not sure. There's a lot of information here. And he became so successful, he started his own electrical company. But then that was bought uh, eventually by, um, I think it was bought by Westinghouse. Um, and that was directly um, uh, involved with Edison. So Edison uh, company actually bought this guy out. Now, in the meantime... Um, while he was doing all this, uh, he was trying to uh, perfect um, a, an, an insulated thermos. Uh, he found that, you know, you, being an outdoorsman, going out, he found out that there wasn't anything adequate enough to keep coffee uh, warm uh, long enough and uh, to keep things cold enough. So... And the thermoses that were out there were uh, vacuumed, but they were glass bottles. Uh, uh, 
encased in a, a metal uh, casing. And I've found these kind of uh, thermoses before, and the bottles are always broken. And they still made them all the way up into the 50s. I mean, I think my school, I think uh, one of the main things about my school lunch boxes were the fact that the thermoses, you had to be careful because they had a glass lining. But this guy developed a metal vacuum bottle and it was um, insulated with charcoal and became really popular. And so he was the first to create that. And uh, that was pretty much it. Uh, he started his company and the date on here, you can see this is one of the original. Um, he started this uh, in 1903 and uh, but by the time he, I think 1913 is the patent date on this uh, this bottle and this lid. It's all information is on here. I wish you could see it a little better, but you can see it. And uh, it's pretty cool because it doesn't say thermos on it. It says something like frost something on it. I can barely read it. So it, apparently they were promoting it things keeping cool in it too for 24 hours so they boasted that time so it was a big deal so this guy Stanley was uh he didn't just invent thermoses he it's because we were electric lights you're using today it's because of him so heads up you know hands uh hands up for this guy he was a uh a big contributor to the industry uh in more ways than one and this is cool to find this in this condition. I mean, like I said, I mentally detect, and if I found it like this, I'd be a happy camper. And the story behind it is really interesting. There's a lot more to it than what I just told you. But, hey, in the time that I have, it's uh, enough information. This thing was probably 1920s, uh, 1930s. People kept these thermoses a long time. So this could easily go back... To, to 1900s, uh, it's uh, heavy enough, to be honest with you. So that is one of my surprised uh, finds. The other bottle uh, that I found I thought I could get information with is this uh, Billings and Craig. But because Billings is also uh, the capital of Montana, I got a lot of information on that. And the only Billings and Craig... Um, that I could find information about was, um, I think, a, a clothing company. And uh, they're out of Iowa, too, and they might even be related. We don't know, but obviously this is a salad dressing, it looks like to me. So, And it's probably uh, very late 30s. I found this jar. I didn't make much deal with it. It's uh, 1940s. I would assume I'm just going to keep it for using it. It's it's very useful and it's a cool. It's a coffee jar. I would assume a lot of coffee came in that very style jar. I also have this. Um, it has a crack on it, but that's all right. This uh, jar that is um, different than most of them. It has a weave pattern to it. I call it and. It's a pretty jar. You put a nice lid on it. It will look a cool. The other things that I found, this, I don't know what it is. It's probably a little sab jar. This, I didn't know it was going to be pink. It, it was probably a salt shaker from the way it is designed or what have you. Sit on a table and it's depression glass. So that's a, another depression glass piece I have found. I found several of them in the uh, 30s and you expect to find them in that time period little beat up uh, baby doll cup uh, i like finding these i have a cold collection of this stuff it's like crazy but uh this one's a little crack but that's the way that <laughs> is over there uh another interesting um bottle i found was in a later part of the dump and it is a very early uh, Hyde's uh, almond and uh, almond cream, honey and almond. These are such a common bottle. I mean, 
you find them all the time and they went for a long long they had a long run um it was first established uh, by a guy called alvis stone hyde and in portland maine he um of course work got there in i think way back in the 18 uh 62 he went he moved to portland from Somewhere else, I don't really know exactly where, but he moved to Portland, worked for a chemist or a pharmacist there, a drugstore, and uh, he was uh, such a go-getter that in by 1870, he owned that uh, very business. And he used it for the catalyst for his concoction that he had been working on all this time, which was the almond and honey uh, hand cream and he started selling it out of that little portland store and it was very successful as we all know you find those bottles everywhere um he and his son uh expanded the business built a bigger place in portland and then moved to new york and his big manufacturing really i think ended up uh in the hands of a big uh pharmaceutical or if you want to call pharmaceutical or household pharmaceutical company and um, these uh, guys um, I think they bought the company and uh, moved it to New Jersey now I think their names were linen and fink or something like that and uh, they carried that company from the 1920s uh, all the way to the 1960s this bottle here is a very early blown in the mold uh, sample uh, these were a common size uh, sample bottle but not this is the earliest one i've ever found most of them are machine made and you, a lot of them are screw screw caps and this this style uh it's embossed on all four sides there's the almond cream there and uh it said it has a little disclaimer at the alcohol content is seven and a half so there was alcohol capacity three and one half ounces so they had to put that all on here, but it's the oldest version of this sample I found. I find hundreds of these. I don't even keep them. They're not really... I have some old, old ones that are larger than this, but there you go. That one came out of... That was a late throw for sure. Now, this one is a VIX, and the only reason I keep... I find them. VIX are common. Um... But the only reason I found this, kept this vapor rub is because of the fact that, I don't know if this thing's going to focus on this, but it has the complete logo uh, Vicks vapor rub. This is the early version of that. Mostly you just see the V on the bottom. But this is an early version of this Vicks. And Vicks is, is a pretty old company. Um... It goes back all the way to 1905. It was, again, um, invented by a pharmacist. Uh, it first started in Germany, I think, by a German pharmacist. Uh, no, France. A, France. a French pharmacist invented uh, um, an arthritis rub called Bengay. Back in the day, there was it was still around. Uh, Bengay uh, was the first design of this. Hey, what is it? What is it? No, tell me what you want. Well, why don't you go? Why don't you go and play? Give me a. Go get the ball. Go get the ball, okay? That a girl. That a girl. Keep her occupied. Anyway, so <laughs> I'm sorry about that. But anyway, this uh, VIX became pretty popular. And so, well, the Bengay did. And then this guy from selma north carolina now there's a bottle digger out of there that 
you might know. Scott, I forget his last name. He digs out of there. He's, um, I think, Southern Searcher. He's pretty good. I mean, he, he he's fair with prices, and that's pretty much what I watch him for. He finds a lot of the things you, we don't find down here in Georgia. Uh, but, you know. Anyway, this guy invented uh, Vicks Vaporub. And uh, what he did, actually, is he sort of copied the uh, Bengaga high and uh, just took some petroleum de jelly and put uh, a menthol uh, treatment to it because he realized that when people use Bengay for their arthritis, they also helped their sinuses. They would say, oh, you know, this stuff is great for... I could breathe so much easier now. And so... He got an idea. He said, well, I know what this stuff is compound is. And maybe I just said, skip the middleman and just make this stuff myself for that very purpose. And that's what he did. And Vicks Vaporub uh, actually became incorporated in 1912. And it went on to this very day. So this, of all these bottles here, maybe aside from the Stanley, this guy still stands. And uh, it's might have it in your closet right now in your medicine cabinet right now so there you have it um not so much great dig but a lot of information and some little things that i did find here so there you have it um my finds for yesterday and my wrap up for today so good luck on your searches i'm going to go out and uh start looking for homesteads and you know outhouses and individual dumps in uh, abandoned play areas that I know houses were once stood. Maybe some of them still stand there. I don't know. I haven't gotten to the site, but I've Google mapped them, so I know where they're at. I'm going to go out and look for some of that stuff. Hopefully, I'll find some older Cokes, and uh, there you have it. I hope you have a great day. Uh, hit that this subscribe button, and uh, leave a comment if you like. Have a great one. Bye.